Let's get started on your notes over an introduction to quadratic functions. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go over the parts of a quadratic function and introduce you to some vocabulary terms. And a lot of students really struggle with these vocabulary terms in this unit. So as you can see on the graph that's on this page, the graph of a quadratic function forms a shape of a U and it'll be a right side up U or an upside down U, but we call this U-shaped graph a parabola. A lot of students want to say parabola, but it's parabola. And as you can see, it's perfectly symmetrical. Okay, it's an even function. It's perfectly symmetrical. And that line that will divide the parabola into two congruent halves is called the axis of symmetry. It's the axis of symmetry. And as you can see, it goes all the way. It's a vertical line and it goes straight through this point right here. So we call this lowest or highest point the vertex. And all of this is just new vocabulary terms. And so you'll hear me say it a lot through this unit. And the last new vocabulary term or terms that I want to introduce you to is you can see on this graph, it crosses our, we have our x-axis here and our y-axis here. It crosses our x-axis, this particular graph, crosses it twice. Okay, so what do we call where it crosses our x-axis? We call it x-intercepts. Well, you also might hear the term roots. So if you were ever asked, what are the x-intercepts of the graph or of the function? Well, the x-intercept is when y is 0. So we'll plug in 0 for y and we'll solve for x. You also might hear, what are the roots of the function? You also might hear, what are the zeros of the function? You also might hear, what are the solutions of the function? And all of these terms mean the same thing. So let's move on. So we talk about standard form and vertex form of a quadratic. Standard form is written ax squared plus bx plus c. So the number in front of the x squared is our a term. So in this particular example, the value of a is 2. So ax squared plus bx, the b value is the number in front of the x. In this example, your b value is 5. ax squared plus bx plus c, c is your constant term. And remember, the sign in front goes with the number, so my constant here, or c value, is negative 3. So you might see quadratic functions written in what we call standard form, and they're written in this ax squared plus bx plus c. You also might see quadratics written in vertex form, where it's a times x minus h squared plus k, where your vertex is h, k. So I want to talk about linear versus quadratic parent functions. So you've seen a linear function, f of x equals x. It starts, or it goes through the origin, and my slope is 1, right? So slope is the number in front of the x. If nothing is there, you can put a 1 there. So when I rise 1 and run 1, it forms this perfectly straight line, and I'm going to draw it as straight as possible, that looks like this. Positive slope, slope is 1, and it's just a line, okay? So that's a, this is the linear parent function. Our quadratic parent function, it's, we're going to take every input value and we're going to square it. So I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to first plug in 0. 0 squared is 0. If I plug in positive 1, remember my x values or my input, positive 1, and I square it, I get positive 1. If I plug in negative 1 for x and I square that, what's that going to be? It's also positive 1. So your quadratic parent function is going to take this shape because it doesn't matter if you square a positive number or a negative number, your y value will always be positive. So my y values are always above the x-axis. So let's move on to some definitions. So our axis of symmetry, what is it? And let's, let's get to know it a little bit more. So what is this axis of symmetry? It's the vertical line that divides the parabola into two congruent halves. So let's write that down. The vertical line 
guides, the parabola into two congruent halves. And it always passes through the, I said it on the previous page, but it passes through the vertex. And we have a formula, a handy dandy little formula. You might, when you think of formulas, you might think of like, what's the formula to find the area of a triangle? Um, well, the formula to find the axis of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a. So we're going to be working with this formula today. So in this example, it says graph a quadratic with x equals 4 as the axis of symmetry. Okay, so x equals 4. That's a vertical line. So I'm going to go on my x-axis to where x is 4. It's right there. So I'm looking for, here's going to be my axis of symmetry, x equals 4. I want to graph a quadratic, so a U-shaped graph, with this as my axis of symmetry. So I could just put my vertex anywhere on this line, and I could do a U-shape up or a U-shape down. And for my example, I'm just going to do a U-shape up. Kind of looks like a V, but it's really a U. So that's the axis of symmetry. Now let's move on to the vertex. The vertex is the highest or lowest point or part of the graph. So our y value of our vertex is determined by plugging in the axis of symmetry value for x. So I'm going to write something down that might confuse you. But what this means is, if my axis of symmetry always goes through my vertex, I'm going to show you this example right here, right? If my axis of symmetry always goes through my vertex, then the x value of my vertex is going to be that value. Okay, so that means the x value of my vertex is negative b over 2 times a. So how do I get any y value when given an x value? Plug in that x value into the function and see what you get for y. And so I'm going to write it like this, f of negative b over 2a. That's probably really confusing for you. But that just means all I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in negative b over 2a into my function, and I'm going to get my y value. So this is just fancy schmancy function notation, if you remember that. So let's move on. How do we know if the parabola opens up or opens down? Well, it's actually really easy to determine that. When the parabola opens up, the a value is positive, and the vertex is known as a minimum. So this is what that might look like. Let's graph our parent function, f of x equals x squared. Starts at our origin, and it goes like this. Out 1, up 1, out 2, up 4. Because if I square 2, I get positive 4. And if I square negative 2, I also get positive 4. So it's going to look like this. And it kind of looks like a V, but it should be a U. So this vertex right here, right there, that is known as a minimum. So I can call it the vertex, but I can also call it a minimum. And if I call it a minimum, then that just lets you know a little bit more information. It lets you know that the parabola opens up. So as you can see, this a value right here, remember if nothing is there, I can put a one. If that a value is positive, that's how I know that my parabola opens up. So how do I know if it opens down? Well, if that a value is negative, the vertex is known as a maximum, and that lets me know that it opens down. So let's graph this f of x equals negative 1x squared, and as you can see, this a value is negative. All that means is I'm going to square x. If you think about your order of operations, I'm going to apply my exponent first, and then I'm going to apply this negative right here. If I square x, I'm going to take every y value is actually going to be negative. So obviously 0 has no, val it has no value, so it can't be positive or negative. So 0, 0 is a point on my graph. But if I square 1 and then I take the negative value of it, I get negative 1. And I can do the same thing with 2, and I'll get negative 4. And it opens down like this. Okay. We'll get, into, we'll get into graphing quadratics more, but this is what your graph would look like if you have a negative a value. It will open down, and this vertex right here 
is known as a maximum. It's the highest point on your graph. It's the maximum value. So let's move on and let's get going on some examples. It says use the formulas to determine the vertex and axis of symmetry for each quadratic function. Then draw a rough sketch of the parabola on the graph provided. So let's get started. And this function right here, f of x equals x squared plus 10x plus 15, the first thing I'm going to do is identify a, b, and c. So if nothing is in front of that variable, I can put a 1. And a value is the number in front of x squared, that's 1. So what's the b value? It's 10. And what's the c value? It's 15. So now let's find our axis of symmetry. And we've got this little formula over here to help us determine our axis of symmetry. It's negative b over 2a or opposite b over 2a. So our axis of symmetry is the opposite of b, which is negative 10 over 2 times a, 2 times 1, which is what? Negative 5, which means our axis of symmetry is x equals negative 5. So I'm actually going to go ahead and plot that on my graph over here. 3, 4, 5. There's where ne x is negative 5. And my axis of symmetry is the vertical line that goes through that point. Whoop, whoop. So obviously, there's kind of a lot of stuff going on here, and if you're confused at this point, you can always pause the video, rewind it, maybe watch something again if you're, str if you're struggling with something. But I'm just going to keep moving forward, and if you really get it, then maybe you can fast forward through some things. So now my vertex, the vertex is, I'm going to write it like this as an ordered pair. I'm going to take this negative 5, and I'm going to plug it in for x. And I'm going to figure out what that y value is. So I'm actually going to write it like this, f of negative 5. That's just function notation for what is the y value when x is negative 5. So here's what I like to do. Given this formula right here, I'm replacing every x value with negative 5. So the first thing I'm going to do is replace every x value with parentheses. And then in those parentheses, I'm going to put what x equals. So I'm replacing x with negative 5 because I'm looking for the y value when x is negative 5. So let's do a little bit at a time. Negative 5 squared is positive 25. 10 times negative 5 is negative 50 plus 15. And then I've got 25 minus 50 is negative 25 plus 15. Different sign subtract. f of negative 5 is what? negative 10. And if you struggle with stuff like this, I'm sure you're at a point in your year where if you need to use a calculator, you can. But obviously, part of your SAT is going to be non-calculator, so I always think it's a good idea to keep up with your integer rules and try this without a calculator. That means that my when x is negative 5, y is negative 10. And this is my vertex. So let's graph this. Negative 5, negative 10, that right there is my graph. So what else do we know? We know that our a value is positive. a is positive, so the parabola opens which way? When a is positive, the parabola opens up, which means my graph is going to look something like this. And I'm just drawing a rough sketch, so don't even worry about the, the points being correct. We're just finding our vertex, and is this a minimum or a maximum value, our vertex? Since it opens up, that vertex is a minimum, okay? So let's move on to number two. The first thing I want to do, it's written in standard form, is identify A, B, and C. So what's my A value? Negative 2, B, negative 8, C is negative 15. So now using those values, I'm going to find my axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry is negative b over 2a. So what's the opposite of b? 8 over 2 times a, that's 2 times negative 2, which is 8 over negative 4, which is what? Negative 2, which means my axis of symmetry is x equals negative 2. So I'm going to go ahead and graph my axis of symmetry. 
How do you remember that x equals a number is a vertical line? I teach a little sloped here for this. And x equals negative 2. So that is my axis of symmetry. I know that's the vertical line that's going to divide my parabola into two congruent parts or two congruent halves. So the next thing I want to do is determine the vertex. How do I do this? Well, my vertex is a point. It's an ordered pair. And since my axis of symmetry goes through my vertex, I know that negative 2 is going to be the x value. So I'm going to plug in negative 2 in my function for x and determine what is y when x is negative 2. So the first thing I'm going to do is, again, replace every x, value, x variable with parentheses. And then in those parentheses, I'm going to put what I'm replacing x with, so negative 2. And then I'm just going to fall, I'm just going to simplify this using my order of operations. So the first thing I want to do is negative 2 times negative 2 squared. Well, that's positive 4. Negative 8 times negative 2 is positive 16. And then minus 15. And then here, I obviously need to multiply negative 2 times 4 first. But I can go ahead and simplify 16 and negative 15 to be plus 1. And then negative 8 plus 1 is negative 7, which means the y value of my vertex is negative 7, which means my vertex is at negative 2, and I'm going to go from the bottom. There's 10, 9, 8, negative 7. So now what else do we know from our function? We know that a is negative. So which direction does this graph open? Does it open up or does it open down? Well, since a is negative, the parabola opens down. So that's what I'm going to do. It opens down. So that's what it looks like, and that's all you're doing today. So then what if there is no b value? So I want to go over examples that look like this. Determine if the axis of, or determine the axis of symmetry for the following quadratic function, then determine the vertex. So when I see what, what if there is no b value, what if there is no b value, and really let's make it look like this. So right here, I know that a is 1, I know b is, wait a second, there's no b value, there's no x term, which means 0 is the value for b. c is negative 5. So if I'm determining my axis of symmetry when there's no b value, negative b, well, it's just 0, over 2 times 1, 0 divided by anything is just 0. And this will happen every time. When there's no b value, your axis of symmetry is always x equals 0, which means your axis of symmetry is the y-axis. So then my vertex, how am I going to determine that? Well, I'm going to plug in 0 for x. What do I get for y when I plug in 0 for x? I get negative 5. So these are kind of um, easy to do, but you just need to make sure that you recognize that, hey, just because this is the second term when it's written doesn't mean that negative 5 is the b value. The b value is the number in front of the x. So that concludes your notes over... An introduction to quadratic functions. I hope it was helpful.